For the holidays, we're going to be doing something really fun this month with a dev advent calendar. So let's jump into what it is, how I built my dev advent calendar, and what you can expect. Hey everyone, my name is Ben and I'm a VUE core team member and I'm excited to do something really fun this year by creating a dev advent calendar that's full of VUE related goodness. For those who aren't familiar with what a dev advent calendar is, the original concept came from Sarah Drasner a few years ago, where she based it off of the concept of the advent calendar, which is essentially a countdown up until the days of Christmas where every day you get some sort of gift or little surprise as a way to just sort of look forward to the holidays. And so since it's a dev advent calendar, you can certainly expect to see a lot of dev related goodness for this month. All right, let's take a look at how I built the dev advent calendar for 2020. So here what we'll see is that I'm inside of my BenCodeZen project. So this is what powers my site, BenCodeZen.io. Um, it's a standard Nux2 app, uh, not too much configuration in here. Um, pretty Again, fairly standard, just create it using the Nux CLI. And then if you're looking for the source code, you'll be able to find it at GitHub under uh, github.com slash BenCodeZen slash BenCodeZen. Uh, make sure I go ahead and link that in the, show, in the notes below. And so let's also take a look at what we're actually building right in this session. And so what I've gone ahead and built, you'll see here that we're using Zeppelin again to sort of get a lot of these design elements. And so what we'll see here is that we have um, the different cards represent the different days. And then we have like the title the description and let's see. Uh, so it looks like we have some different states that we'll need to accommodate for as well as mobile as well. Since we have to deal with responsive, right? This is the thing we do with web. And so the first thing we want to do is like with any good website is we want to make sure that our content is there, right? Because without content, we really have nothing to work with. And so let's go ahead and jump to that part, that milestone of what I did. And so what you'll see here is that um, I've gone ahead and swapped out the homepage call to action button in order to be like basically how to check out the dev advent calendar uh, since it uh, needs to be a way for people to discover it. So here we go when they click it. You'll see here that um, I've gone ahead and created a page inside of the Nux. You can see here under learn, I created dev advent uh, 2020. And so you'll notice here that in under pages, it's basically following a directory structure that will automatically generate the routes. And so that's why I can refer to it inside of index.view right here, learn slash dev advent 2020 without actually um, basically like going into router.js and finding which component it's pointing to like Pages will automatically do that for me, which is one of the um, definitely one of my favorite conveniences when it comes to using Nuxt. And so what you'll see here is that all I have is some very basic uh, HTML, right? We have the H1, which defines the, the title of the page. Uh, we have the description right here as a P tag. And then we have our list of the different basically calendar days that we're going to be showing. And what you'll notice here is that I'm for now I'm just using a computed property just to generate um, an array of 24 numbers so that I don't have to manually do that, um, basically manage 24 allies. So I've gone ahead and optimized that um, in advance. But again, we'll probably be swapping this out for an actual list of data. But this is a good way to just prototype and get something up and running, right? I think one of the hardest things when we're building things is to try to think of the perfect way to do something. And so when I'm styling, um, the website, one of the things I like to do is go for like the big wins, the thing that makes it really obvious. So you can see here that in this next milestone, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and matched the background because the background really is what starts to make this feel like we're making progress, at least for me. And so what this basically is, is a background color that we've applied on the page itself, along with the, uh, basically the asset URL, which is gonna be a repeating background, just like a square. And then when it's tiled across, it looks like basically like an infinite canvas. So. Um, it's not one giant image, for example. All right. Then once we do that, really the next big win in my eyes is really making sure that we can get the actual calendar sort of looking like the way it's supposed to. And so here, what you'll see now is that once I refresh the page, you'll see now that we actually have the actual white cards that we expect to see in of, inside of our dev advent calendar. So this is a pretty big win. And so what I've done here is you see that inside this LI, I'm looping through the days, but then I'm also bringing in the image um, as long as adding this new class called, uh, so dev advent calendar day, basically, but I've shortened it to diva. 
uh, just the easier typing. And so as you'll notice, I do really like prefixing a lot of my CSS classes because it gives me a sense of where things are supposed to go and how they're related and which can actually be usually a good indicator typically in the future for refactoring. And so you'll see that inside here for the D, uh, Dev Advent Calendar, which I'll, for again, shorten going forward would be Diva. So, so the Diva Calendar here, you'll see, we're just doing a, a grid, CSS grid, you know, four column layout, six rows, and then we've gapped it out and it looks, it's looking pretty good. Um, and then the other thing here with the Diva Day is, I was trying to figure out how to work with the background image here with the dots. Um, originally the file I was given was really too dark. So I was trying to play here with like, um, basically like a pseudo element that could allow us to stack elements so I could actually control the opacity because I didn't want the whole thing to go opaque. Um, but later on, you'll see that um, what, what I found later on is it's actually just easier to go back to the source and have that actual color be changed rather than trying to sort of fake the CSS element. And because again, stacking becomes kind of crazy when you just have to position everything and deal with the Z stack. But now that we have that, um, the key thing here is we got to look at, so the big difference if we're looking between this design and this now, I think visually for me, is the fact that like our, our typography is very, very boring. And so what we're going to do next is we're actually going to swap out the typography. And so you see here, boom. All right, looking already much better. And so what I did here was, um, Unlike sort of most websites where your, your fonts are very consistent throughout the site, this is a special page for my site and I don't think I'll be using Playwright Display basically anywhere else. And so this is where I'm actually using the import URL here um, as a way of just importing it here within the component or page in this instance. And then after that, I'm really, I don't have any interest in having this loaded for users on other places. So a nice little way of keeping the payload down, um, at least for the rest of the site. And so other than that, I'm just using a SAS variable to just sort of keep it consistent as far as where I'm defining it. Um, in the future, I would probably, I may even, like, I would even theoretically maybe pull this out farther. But since, again, since this is encapsulated just to this page, um, and I think there's anything wrong with just leaving it uh, here within the component itself. And so now that we have this, the biggest difference when we're looking between the two is clearly that our icons are different. And so I thought about trying to do this a number of ways, but what I ended up landing on is creating an external uh, basically like data set because like again we could have we could obviously manually like create this and come up with some sort of algorithm for how everything should generate light like we'll notice that here if we look inside of um, if we look inside of the design you see that for example it repeats 210 and so we could probably come up with some way to like mathematically calculate that it's spaced out based on like dividing by eight or something but the truth is, um, I think a lot of times, like especially when we're building things, it's easy to try to over, like I think this will be a slight instance of over-engineering, at least for me, because um, again, this is not really gonna be reused anywhere at this point. And we're really, it's just 24 days. Like if this was like 240 or something larger where the task would be super like intensive to do, then that might be a case um, to work spending time on the algorithm. But um, so I figure let's go with the simpler route. And so what I did here is we've gone ahead and you'll see that um, you'll see that all of a sudden like so our images have swapped. And the reason for that is because I've imported this, I've created a JSON file here inside of my content folder. And so the original design behind like putting it in content folder was that I would be able to fetch it using the Nux content API. Um, but I was having a little bit of issues of getting the JSON to form, like basically show correctly. Um, so I'm not sure why that was, but again, like rather than have that block me and then not being able to use the perfect solution, then that's where I just import it directly inside of the component. Um, I'll reference it inside of data and then I can like, basically I'll pull, I'll pull it out and we just use it. And so as you can see, it's working. And so that's, that's the key thing, right? Especially when we're getting started with building anything is get it working later on. We can optimize a small problem, but at least we'll have something to ship. Um, okay. So now that we have this, the next thing though, is that when we look at the designs, we want to actually be able to tell the users when basically it's ready to be open. And so again, we could probably do some really complicated calculations as far as like, if today matches like the date that is on the object, then we can go ahead and make it current. But again, given sort of like, I sort of like wanted to time box myself and sort of like, again, being able to ship something on time, then the key thing that I realized is, Actually, we just need the data to update accordingly. 
And so what you see here now is that I've enhanced the dev advent JSON to include an additional property, which is whether or not the content is ready to be open or not. And so here we can see that since it's ready, we get like a different styling that indicates the users that we can actually hover over and open it. And so if you're wondering how that's done, that is being done inside of here um, where the do do do, let's find it real quick. All right, so here's my LI. So basically I'm saying that, hey, in the event that we have that ready property and it's true, go ahead and drop the CSS class is ready, which will basically swap out the background image. And then we'll also go ahead and make the button uh, basically like displayed uh, as like for the opening. And so with that done though, I realized what we need to do now is actually be able to toggle the state. And so the way we're gonna, we went, we, or the way I decided to do that is you'll see now is the first thing I did was I actually went ahead and refactored the component because it was really getting to the point where it started to have its own state. It was a little bit complex to manage. Um, it, it's being looped over. And so inside of the components here, we'll see here's Diva Day. Okay, let me close that. Um, what we'll see here is that it takes in the props of the day, right? So it's still taking in that individual object, but then it's gonna track a couple of things like whether or not like the fact that the surprise is visible is true or not. So it'll be its own internal state. So I don't have to uh, like V model the actual, the looped instance, which has its uh, trick like, it, anyways, more on that later. Um, but then here we have like things like we're computing the class names to say whether or not it has like it is ready or not because what I've realized is it's basically going to have different covers based on the state. And so what we'll see here is that basically if it's visible, right, if it's supposed to be visible, we want to basically only show the, the card styles with, with text. On the other hand, if it is ready, we need it to actually have the a cover on it in addition to the is ready and then otherwise it would have just a regular cover which in this case is that gray dotted background and so yep so we can see here that we have our li here and i've wired everything up so that in here in the button right if i click it the review supply review surprise that should go ahead and actually show up so if i click it here right now you'll notice that nothing's really happening and so the reason for this is because um, we need to actually like have this surprise piece to it. And so you'll notice that here, if day.surprise actually has content in it. So if I come in here now and I go ahead and update the first day, for example, and surprise has a text of YouTube and it goes ahead and uh, we have what, like a URL, I think it's the other property I have. So it'll be like, for example, uh, HTTPS youtube.com slash Zen, right? And so now that we have that, you'll see that when I click on this, it'll actually swap out and display correctly. And so this is cool because now we can, users can see what's going on and then they can click on it to actually basically open their present, which is, which is nice. And so given that though, what I realized though is that we needed an actual different state for the reveal because while this is good for the first day, I realized that as we go throughout the week, we don't want people to have to open every single one. And really there should be some card like as we go forward basically every card that's already been passed should just basically stay open so people can just instantly scan and read the material and so what i did for that is and so what i did instead is you'll see is i swapped the ready boolean that i was using into an actual status that way we could track whether or not it was an upcoming thing right where we can actually see the stars whether it's a current thing that's basically like is it today and if it's today show the stars so that you can open it but otherwise, um, there's going to be another status that we're going to do um, in here, which is going to be um, whether or not the status is visible, meaning it's basically it's past already and then just show it all the time. And so this then allows us to do things like, so again, if I add back in the, the surprise we had, um, and I can't unstash it because it'll overwrite everything else that we just did. So again, if I just do YouTube, and then I'll just, for the URL, again, I'll just do the placeholder. So we'll just do youtube.com, so that's Ben Zen, for example. You'll see now that if I switch it over to visible, for example, you'll see that it actually just, it's now automatically displayed. There's no open, there's no what, like, there's no state as far as switching that out. It's now just always visible. On the other hand, if it's upcoming, as expected, it will just be the icon, no button. And then when we have the current state, then this will actually be, um, you know, show the stars so that we can click and then toggle it open, which is nice. And so again, some of you may be thinking like, okay, like, so couldn't you do this like more, like with some sort of algorithm and a hundred percent? Yes. 
Um, I think that if this was something that we were doing every month or something that was going to be reusable and we needed it to scale, then I think at some point we would basically just create something that determines like based on the server date, we might use like a serverless function, for example, so that we can actually like prevent people from hacking it. Like we would make a check and then if the server date is this, then render this. And then that way you don't have people just sort of going in and hacking the data. But this is, I think, good enough to ship. Um, and so that's why like we're approaching with this because it's a nice way of being really tangible with the data. Um, it's very clear to see and declarative as far as where it's coming from. And so finally, the last thing we have to do though, is you'll notice that our design is kind of tight right now. Um, you'll notice that like it's fine on desktop. It looks good, like it's centered, it looks good. But the moment we get sort of down to mobile, it doesn't look that great. And so what we need to do is go ahead and add those responsive styles. And so, great, okay. So now what you'll see here is that the responsive styles has been updated. So you'll see um, it's a combination of things where we take the calendar itself, which probably in the future, like if we like continue refactoring this, would become its own, um, its own component. So here is where we're sort of defining like how it goes from mobile to desktop. So you can see that it actually collapses down into a single column and then it does two, three, and then four as expected. So this way it's a little bit cleaner. Um, from an implementation perspective. And then finally, we just had to do a little bit of finessing as far as like what to display on mobile because there's not as much room for the button as we saw earlier, like that open button. So we had to do a little bit of finessing as far as like only allowing the user to get that indication of click, which is that hover icon, um, not the hover icon, the cursor pointer. And then once it has that, then um, it put, at least we click it and then, oh, I don't have a surprise on it right now, so nothing's gonna show, but that would basically allow the user to toggle it accordingly. And yeah, th so those are the highlights um, as far as the process of building the dev advent calendar. Again, um, if you're looking for the different milestones we jump to, they're basically individual commits that we've been switching off so that you can see sort of the highlights and we can talk about the different challenges that came up during it. And yeah, so this is it. Um, again, if you're looking for the source code, it's under the Ben Code Zen repo and they'll be under individual commits in case you're looking for different snapshots. But otherwise, uh, that's all there was to building the dev advent calendar. If you have any requests for content that you'd like to see related to Vue.js, be sure to comment down below. Otherwise, hope you enjoy the content that we have planned for you for this dev advent calendar. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.